I'd like to clarify something I said in my last blog entry. To be honest with you all, I've been operating off very little sleep, and my workload has been stacking up. That happening in conjunction with the recent occurrences I've described has been weighing down on my mental state. With this in mind, please take my claims regarding paranormal activity with a grain of salt. A mix of stress and confusion left me grasping for any possible explanation for what I've gone through. It's entirely irrational to fill in the gaps of my knowledge with random conclusions. I hope you all understand my thought process concerning the theory I typed down earlier. For now, I should remain agnostic until I find more evidence to support a logically sound conclusion. That being said, it seems like the only way to gather more evidence is to continue playing the game. My forum post has still not garnered any responses. The web results for the keywords Township Village still produces zero relevant results. It looks like I'm the only person who's even aware of this game, and exploring the rest of the DS, aside from the camera roll of course, yielded no useful information. I know I said I would take a break from the game for a while. While I predicted putting my gameplay on hiatus for a bit longer, I can't just put it off anymore. It's becoming increasingly difficult not to think about Mr. O. His image has been branded into my mind ever since he entered my dreams. I can only hope that exploring the rest of the game world will bring me some form of closure. Maybe then I'll be able to repress my ever-growing anxiety. My schoolwork can wait. For now, I need to allocate as much time and energy as possible towards playing the game. I'll return to this entry later today, after I finish with my game session. This page is awaiting further updates. Check back in once in a while to catch the next one. I'm back, and I've got a lot to say. I don't know what the hell I just went through. My mind is a clusterfuck of disorganized thoughts right now. But I need to type them out as soon as I can whilst my memory's still fresh. I'm sorry if I come across as incoherent in this. I tried to be as clear as possible. When I booted up the game and entered the world, my character spawned in front of the school, right where I left off. Up to that point, I had been blindly traveling, but this time was different. This was no longer just a nostalgia trip. I fully intended to search for more information about the true nature of the game. The only lead I had was the house I stumbled into from entry run of my blog. It had been the only occupied home in the town, and that couldn't have been a coincidence. As I made my way back towards the town, I heard the familiar sound of footsteps trailing behind me. How typical. No matter where I went, he followed. Their vision fell upon my character as I entered the house. None of the character models had moved since I had last visited the place. They all stood still, like statues. Only their eyes shifted whilst I traversed each room. If I'm honest, I paid them very little attention. My mind defaulted to blurring out their presence. I wasn't exactly sure what I was looking for. I hoped the house contained a clue for me. I needed a sense of direction as I progressed through the game using the keypad to highlight every object in sight. I attempted to interact with everything I could. I clicked on every bookshelf, every desk, and every drawer. Nothing I found was of use to me. I felt utterly defeated and pessimistically suspected that searching the house was a fruitless endeavor. As I approached the door to leave, I had an idea. I turned and approached the model of Mr. O that had been following me. When I interacted with him, a text box popped up above his hand. Since we're here, do you want to go downstairs, Jeremy? This confused me. I had searched the entire house at that point, and I knew there was no basement. I selected the yes option, and Mr. O spun around and promptly walked forward. My character automatically followed him. We had entered a cinematic cutscene within the game. I followed Mr. O into his bedroom, and he approached his bed. 
I watched as he slid the bed to the side, revealing a hole in the floor where a ladder stood. Mr. O stepped onto the ladder and descended. I knew for a fact that I had tried interacting with that bed before. Nothing happened when I attempted to shift it. As my character climbed down the rungs of the ladder, I remembered my previous play session. When I'd been trapped inside the locker room, I was only able to exit after approaching Mr. O. I had found myself in a similar situation. There were certain locations in the game that were impossible to access or exit without the help of Mr. O. The first time I encountered that situation, I dismissed it as unimportant. As it happened a second time, I began to suspect that it was an intentional game mechanic. When I finally found myself at the bottom of the ladder, I was alone in a large room. A header dropped down from the top of the screen, and it read, Mr. O's Basement. Something about the place struck me as familiar, but I couldn't quite place it at first. I simply felt a sense of deja vu wash over me. It was a feeling that grew in intensity the longer I stayed inside of Mr. O's basement. Mr. O was waiting for me at the opposite end of the room. As I walked towards him, my character entered another cutscene. He stood against the wall, with Mr. O standing directly in front of him. Mr. O withdrew a camera from his inventory and began snapping photos of my character. After a few moments, Mr. O set his camera down and approached me. You did such a great job, Jeremy. I'm so proud of you. He turned towards the camera, facing me directly. He tilted his head and grinned. He was trying to directly communicate his glee. Not to my character, but to me, the player. This continued for a couple of seconds before he faced my character once more. He proceeded to hand them something before leaving the area. As I opened my inventory, I realized he had given me a cookie, as well as 25 gold coins. By that point, I was already weirded out by what had taken place. Why the fuck had Mr. O taken photos of me? Why did he reward me as well? I hardly had time to think about that, however, because that's when I noticed it. I had taken in the environment and realized that my character was surrounded by blank, white walls which were similar in appearance to the ones I found my DS camera roll. What the fuck? I felt sick to my stomach as a sense of pure dread set within me. I didn't want to continue, it all felt so incredibly wrong. I forced myself to carry onward, knowing in the back of my mind that stopping would do me no good. I wanted the satisfaction of knowing what was going on, regardless of what the knowledge entailed. I made my way across the room and towards the ladder. I ascended it and stepped out of the basement. Mr. O stood next to the hole in the floor waiting for me. He quickly stepped towards me, and a dialogue bubble popped up above his head once again. Jeremy, you need to listen to me, he began. He turned to face me directly once again. When you love someone, Jeremy, you do anything for them, right? You take care of them. You make them happy, Jeremy. Remember, there's nothing wrong with making someone you love happy. I just stared at the screen. Mr. O returned my gaze. His smile had vanished at that point. His typical jovial expression had been replaced with a stern look. And it's okay to keep secrets to protect the ones you love, isn't it, Jeremy? You can keep everything between us, right? I was given the option to respond to him. A text bubble appeared next to my character. An arrow pointed to the yes option. There was no other choice presented to me. I was not allowed to dissent, only to agree. I tried to move away from Mr. O, only to find that I couldn't. I was stuck. There was only one way forward, and it made my skin crawl. He wasn't asking me a question. He was giving me a command. I selected the yes option. Doing so caused Mr. O's smile to return, and I was fully able to move freely again. I didn't stick around. I forced my character to leave the house as quickly as possible. 
I snapped the DS shut and sat it down beside me. When Mr. O told me not to tell anyone about him, it invoked something deep within my gut. It was the exact same feeling that overcame me when I thought about telling my mother about Mr. O's presence in the game. The exact same fucking feeling. I know what I said earlier, about not jumping to hasty conclusions. I know I said that, and I know that maybe I'm contradicting myself here, but I don't care. I need to type my intuitive reaction to all this here, if only to reflect on it later. Although the overall vibe of the game had felt off to me since I began playing it, I couldn't have foreseen this. As I replayed the game, the only purpose it served so far is to remind me of him. The only characters in this game are him and I. It's as if the game is trying to tell me that I'm alone in this world, alone aside from being with him. Wherever I go, he follows. Whenever I go anywhere, he watches. He always watches. The game wants me to know that. It wants me to accept it. Now it's working, isn't it? As I go on, I pay less attention to his model following me. As I play, I take it for granted that he's staring at me constantly. It wants me to think that this is normal. Fuck, man. There's even an entire room in my character's house where he lives. He wants to get close to me. Whenever I need something, whether I'm stuck and I can't progress, I'm meant to go to him. I'm meant to be dependent on him. To view him as the solution to my problems. I know this all sounds insane, but it's honestly how I feel. It's as if... It's as if the game is training me, for lack of a better term. It's controlling how I think. It's controlling how I feel. It's controlling how I behave. It's making me act the way he wants me to act. I don't fucking know. I'm kind of spitballing here, but... Is this really that much of a stretch? I don't feel like I'm speaking gibberish here. Please tell me if I'm making sense. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's a perfectly innocent, reasonable explanation for all of this. If that's the case, it sure isn't fucking appearing that way. Or maybe... I just need sleep. I've been up for far too long. Perhaps I don't want to rest because I'm afraid I'll face his torment in my dreams again. I'm sorry I've subjected you all to my ramblings. All I wanted was to take a break from my stressful life and travel back to simpler times. I never expected I would unleash all of this upon myself. I'm not sure if I'll touch the game again. While I'd hate to have unanswered questions about the game and Mr. O, I'm not sure if continuing is worth it. This thing is really starting to fuck with my head. I understand my previous remarks about wanting to know more about the game, no matter what that entailed. I'm not sure how much conviction I hold regarding that attitude anymore. This user has not expressed certainty in adding further updates. I hadn't planned on continuing this blog. Believe me, I will not be picking up that DS again. It's been thrown back into that cupboard where it belongs and where it will stay. Still, I was browsing through my email the other night and received a notification in my inbox. Someone had finally replied to my forum post. I hesitated to open the email. Even if someone had reached out to me with information about the game, I wasn't sure that I wanted it. In the end, I did open the email, and I returned to the forum post. I convinced myself that so long as I didn't have to play the game again, I would be okay. Opening the page, my eyes scanned the single response to my question. Hey, I know about this game, and I know who created it. Email me so we can talk? Below his reply was an email address. I won't include it here for the sake of preserving the responder's privacy. 
As I plugged the address into the email search bar, I paused. I sat motionlessly and gawked at the name associated with the account I was about to reach out to. Sammy. I wasn't sure what exactly to make of it. It could have been a coincidence that the person who reached out to me about Township Village just so happened to have the name reminiscent of my childhood friend, right? Someone had to have been fucking with me. At that point, I assumed that someone had stumbled upon my blog, searched for my forum post, and tried trolling me upon finding it. I hastily typed out an email and sent it his way. Who the fuck is this? He replied within minutes. Who are you? It read. I grew flustered as I realized I hadn't introduced myself. I'm the guy who posted the forum thread you replied to. Who the fuck are you? After I sent that, the Google Hangouts tab popped up. It contained a message from the address I had been emailing. Are you Jeremy from Blank Elementary? I was taken aback. I knew for a fact I had never shared my school name on this blog. Who are you? How do you know what school I went to? Jesus, dude, relax. It's Sam. Do you remember me from school? Are you fucking serious? Deadly serious. You're Sam. Yep, long time no see, buddy. And you know about the game? Do you really not? Do I really not what? Do you really not know about the game? I swear to God, I've forgotten where I got it from and who made it. Please tell me you can fill me in on this shit. Yeah, I can, but there's a lot to explain. Is it possible we can meet somewhere? Maybe. Do you live near me? I'm located at... Omitted for privacy reasons. That's not far from where we used to live as kids. Guess you haven't traveled too far away, huh? Do you live nearby or not? I can drive there if you give me a few hours. Do you want to meet over coffee? A few hours? You can't just tell me here. I told you. It's a lot. Please? Fine. We'll meet up. One more thing. Yeah? I've been searching for information on this game for a while. Whenever I Google it, nothing shows up. If you knew about it and you've been interested in it enough to find my forum post, why hadn't you made a post about it yourself? Because I couldn't bring myself to reach out. I just kept putting it off for years. But man, some things you just can't forget. Every now and then I would check online to see if others had posted about it. Well, not others. You, specifically. I'll promise I'll make more sense when we meet. Trust me. I'm not sure what it is he can't just tell me over the computer. I don't know what to expect. He seemed pretty urgent to meet me. I can't say I blame him. I feel just as eager to talk with him. If what he's been saying is true, he could potentially be the key to answering my questions. We're seeing each other at local Starbucks later today. I'll be back soon. This page is awaiting further updates. Check back in once in a while to catch the next one. When he stepped out of the car, the first thing I saw was his bright blonde hair. He had a baby face. It still very much resembled the image of him I had back in my digital camera. He ran up to me and gave me a hug. I returned his embrace. There's a saying that although we can't always remember what people say to us, we'll always remember how they made us feel. Even if I couldn't remember our childhood friendship, I very much felt the sense of joy caused by reconnecting with someone I used to be so close with. We entered the Starbucks. He asked me if I wanted a drink and even offered to cover the cost. I declined, insisting that we chat. He obliged my request, and we chose a booth to sit down in. He smiled, but I found it difficult to reciprocate his joyful appearance. I was unresponsive to his attempts at small talk. It wasn't that I didn't wish to make up for lost time, it's just that there were more pressing matters to be discussed. Taking the hint, he assumed a straight face and cut the bullshit. He apologized, admitting that he was unsure of how to broach the elephant in the room. I asked him to start from the beginning, and tell me how he knew about the game, 
and how he knew about who made it. He looked at me with great remorse and softly muttered that he knew things because he knew the creator of the game on a personal level. What he said next, I'm not sure I'll be able to provide. I'm sorry. I just can't. I just can't do it. This person has not expressed certainty in adding further updates. I've been debating even uploading this next section to the blog. I figured that if I was going to do it, I'd need to be as coherent as possible. Typing this part out the other day would not be conducive to meeting that end, so I took a break to calm my nerves. I'm still shaken up, but if I don't type this out now, then when? Sam told me that Mr. O was his father. All of my prior theories had been wrong. He was no ghost, and he wasn't my imaginary friend. As is often the case, the truth is far simpler than we take it to be. He was a real fucking person. He was someone that I knew, and he was someone that knew me. Sam said that when we were kids, I would frequently come to his house for our little playdates. Sometimes, I would even spend the night for a sleepover. He told me that his father always took a special interest in me. Oftentimes, he would be the one to ask Sam whether he wanted me to come over for a visit. Sam's father had a history in software development and engineering. When he saw how much I loved my DS, he wanted to connect with me through that medium. He'd been pondering over how he would accomplish this for weeks on end. Sam told me that at times, it was all his father could think about. My memory's a little fuzzy here, Sam began. But I think one night after you left my house, you accidentally left your DS behind. When he found out about that, he went out to the store. He told me he was going out to get a game. He came back with a copy of an Animal Crossing game cartridge, and he went down to the basement with both the game and your DS. And what did he do with them? I asked. He told me he was going to make a modified version of the game. One that he'd used to build a world for you specifically. Or you could spend time with him even when you weren't visiting us. He often rambled about how much you would love it. He even went on and on about a special room he would make for the game. That you could enter if you did a good job, as he put it. My thoughts shifted to the locked door in the school. I vividly remembered the sign next to it, labeled Mr. O. I refused to even imagine what awaited me in that room. I didn't remember any of this. No matter how hard I tried, everything Sam told me felt brand new. At that moment, I wanted to see Sam's father. I wanted to ask him why the fuck he would ever make such a sick game for a kid like me. I looked Sam dead in the eyes and asked, Sam, where's your father? How can I reach him? You can't contact him, he said. His voice had begun to tremble. He was starting to choke up. He's in prison. He's been in prison for years now. Only family is allowed to see him, and I never want to see that piece of shit again. I didn't respond. Thousands of thoughts raced through my head, but I didn't speak a single one of them into existence. Instead, I allowed Sam to proceed with what he had to say. When my mother found out, she couldn't take it. She just couldn't fucking take it, man. She's gone because of him. It's his fault. I'm so sorry, man. I'm sorry for what he did. I noticed his body visibly shaking. I placed my hand on his shoulder and rubbed it gently, attempting to calm him down. It's alright, Sam. Just take a deep breath. What did he do? Sam looked up at me. He wiped his eyes with his arm and sighed. He... He abused children. They locked him up for touching goddamn kids. My heart fucking sank beneath my chest. I leaned back in my seat, looking towards the ceiling. There was no way for me to process what I had heard. That fucking monster made a game for me. A game that he filled with replicas of himself for the express purpose of surrounding my character with. 
He made it to condition me to grow closer to him, and as I learned who he was, I felt as though I were going to be sick. Even though I had forgotten much of the contents of the game before revisiting it, it still had control over at least some of my behavior. My unwillingness to even mention what the game contained to my mum immediately came to mind. It was all the truth. A truth I'd been constantly trying to deny, but the truth nonetheless. I recall the images I found on my DS camera roll. Sam had told me earlier that I spent a lot of time at his home. I'd been alone with Sam's father before. In fact, it was likely that we had been alone together multiple times. Not only had I been in the presence of a monster during my childhood, I couldn't remember any of it. I don't know what the fuck happened between us. I don't know what happened to me. Maybe it's for the best that I don't remember. Perhaps if I could recollect the events that happened years ago, I would succumb to a depression far deeper than the one I'm currently finding myself in. The photos of myself I found in the black digital camera. Several of them portrayed me as having a deeply disturbed, anxious look about me. Even as a child, I must have known that something was wrong. I've come to reason that I had suppressed my memory of Sam's father, not wanting to deal with whatever it was I had experienced. And despite these recent revelations having left me horrified, I still feel awful for Sam. It must have been terribly difficult for him to have lost his mother and to have learned about what his father did. I can't imagine having to live with all of that, but it was something I could at least minimally relate with having lost my dad to suicide years ago. There's one thought in particular that I've been wondering about most of all. Why hadn't I heard of this sooner? Even if I couldn't remember what had happened to me, why? Why did my mother never tell me about it? She told me that Mr. O was my imaginary friend. Why did she fucking lie to me? How could she do that? I deserve to know the truth, I just don't understand. I need to take a break. It's becoming too much to handle for me. I need some time to think. I've decided to keep in contact with Sam. Even if he reminds me of that monster, I feel as if we should stick together. For years, he's been affected by what his father has done. I think I should be there for him like I was when we were kids. This user has not expressed certainty in adding further updates. After much internal deliberation, I decided to talk with my mother about, well, everything. She played dumb at first, feigning ignorance. It was only when I told her I'd met up with Sam that she quit her act. I sat her down. I wanted to believe that somehow, some way, she had a justified reason for having lied to me. So I asked her. I asked her why she lied to me about Mr. O. I asked her why she never once spoke about the situation that happened all those years ago. She started apologizing for misleading me, but I quickly cut her off. I wasn't interested in her apologies. Rather, I was interested in the truth. I made her face me and looked directly into my eyes. She was no longer going to hide behind her lies and her apologies. With that... I sat and waited for her to deliver her response. According to her, Sam's father had been among the most unremarkable men she had ever met. She never formed a personal relationship with him. She only ever spoke to him because I had been best friends with his son. There was a night where the sound of sirens entered the neighborhood, and several police cars pulled up near Sam's house. A few officers entered the home and soon exited with Mr. O in their custody. He'd been charged with the possession of indecent images of minors, as well as the assault of several children. He was later convicted of both charges. Upon hearing the news, both she and my father struggled to grasp the possibility that this man had done something to me. Something wrong. Something awful. It wasn't long after Mr. O's arrest that the authorities showed up on our doorstep. My parents had called to voice their concerns regarding my involvement with Mr. O. My mother refused to divulge any specific information regarding what happened afterward with the police. 
She simply stated that they incorporated my case into the investigation, but came up empty-handed. Though no evidence was found to suggest that the man had victimized me, there was no evidence he hadn't, either. This uncertainty weighed down on my father. He had grown restless and highly irritable as the days went on, and no matter what my mother did, he wouldn't calm down. His fear was understandable, and the lack of knowledge about whether his child was harmed eventually drove him over the edge. When my mum found his note, it was already too late. He had left this world, unable to bear his burden any longer. My mother confessed that she wanted to tell me the truth many times over the years, but couldn't bring herself to do so. While I grew up, I eventually came to forget Mr. O even existed at all. As she witnessed me repress my memory of the events that had transpired, she told herself that it was for the best that I completely forgotten what happened. She told me she did it to protect me, to keep me safe from the same paranoia that ended up taking her husband away from her. Although I extended my arms and embraced her following our conversation, I knew I held conflicted thoughts and emotions. On one hand, I understood why she acted the way she did. I sympathized with her dilemma. I was under the impression that by understanding her, I would come to forgive her. Instead, I found that my feelings were far more complex than that. Understanding why she did it didn't make it hurt any less. Knowing what it is that she went through whilst enlightening didn't take away the pain of realizing that someone I trusted kept me in the dark for so long. If I hadn't met with Sam, how long would it have taken for her to tell me? Would I have ever found out what had happened? The crime that occurred had victimized kids. Our legal identities wouldn't have been publicly disclosed. There would have been no way of me knowing that I or anyone else had ever been involved in an investigation. Without inside information, I could never have hoped to independently figure this all out. Perhaps I'm being selfish. After all, I'm not the only one that's hurting. My mother must feel god-awful, and to that end, I truly feel sorry for her. I'm likely going to need time to fix my relationship with her. After all, it's not like I can brush aside years of being lied to, no matter how much I sympathize with her. Later that day, I briefly took the DS out of the cardboard box. There was one last thing I wanted to try. Opening the game, I spawned into the world. I willfully ignored every instance of Mr. O in the game and made my way towards the house. When I reached the computer, I interacted with it and was brought to the character creation menu. There he was, his eyes and his perverted smile as wide as always. I scrolled over to deletion option, hoping to wipe him away from this world he inhabited. I'm not sure why. I just felt as if getting rid of him in the DS would help me feel more distant from my history with him. Needless to say, it didn't work. His character remained and a text box popped up from the bottom of the screen. You shouldn't delete me, Jeremy. I'm your friend, Mr. O, and we need to stick together. I love you, Jeremy. It read. Of course I couldn't delete his model from the game. He had programmed himself as a permanent feature in the world. I attempted to create a new character. I wanted to see if I could introduce others into the world, so that it wouldn't just be him and I alone. Once again, I was unable to do this, and another text box came into view. Aren't I good enough for you, Jeremy? You should be grateful for what you have. I promise I love you. I guess in a way, it's kind of fitting that I couldn't just get rid of him. Just as I can't delete him from my past and pretend he was never there, I can't simply get him out of the game world. I didn't want him to be there, constantly reminding me of his presence. A part of me wished that I had stayed ignorant of his existence. Maybe things would be better had I never explored the attic and retrieved that DS from inside of the box to begin with. Sure, I could just stuff the device back where it came from, but I couldn't forget everything all over again, could I? Then again, maybe I didn't have to forget. 
Despite what happened, I've carried on living my life. I made it all the way to college. Sure, I wasn't conscious then of what I am now. Yet, if what I experienced in the past hasn't stopped me from moving forward so far, maybe it doesn't have to. I still have my mother. No matter how shaky our relationship has gotten, I still love her, and I know she loves me. That's got to be worth something, right? Before I put the DS back into the box and shoved it into the attic, I removed the game cartridge that contained Township Village. I stared at its blank surface. I remember what Sam had told me about the secret room Mr. O created for me. If I played through that game in a way that appeased Mr. O, he would allow me entry into a locked room, just as he did when leading me into the basement. It was just another cruel way of warping me into his pathetic plaything. Maybe a few days ago, I would have been desperate to figure out what was inside that room. However, now that I was aware of the true nature of the game, a single thought came to mind. I didn't need it anymore. I destroyed the game and tossed its remains into the garbage can where it belongs. There was no time to let that piece of junk cost me any more sleep. I opened my computer and scrolled through my email. I skimmed over the lame advertisements and spam. That's when I noticed the Google Hangouts tab. I saw that it contained a notification and I clicked on it. There, I found a message waiting for me. Hey, Jeremy. Hi, son. Are you doing okay? Yeah, I'm doing alright. How about yourself? I'm okay, man. Look, I really wanted to apologize for the way things are right now. It's really fucked up, I know. I wish we didn't have to meet again under these circumstances. It's okay, dude. Believe me, it's okay. It's not your fault. I'm glad I at least got to reconnect with you. You sure? You can be open with me for real, dude. I'm dead serious here. Yeah, I know you are. Look, if I'm struggling with something, I'll let you know, okay? I got it, thank you. I really appreciate it. You know I'm here for you. You'll do the same, won't you? Do the same? What do you mean? You'll talk if you're not feeling okay, right? Yeah, of course I will. Hey Sam, let's meet over coffee soon. I'm kinda bummed out I didn't get to drink the last time. What do you say? Dude, seriously, you're gonna make me drive all the way over there again? Nah, man, I'll meet you halfway. Fine, sounds like a plan. But you're covering the bill since I tried paying for your drinks last time. Yeah, alright, dude. Whatever you say. <laughs>